week. The Sabbath has passed. Three women are there. According to Mark's account, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Of course, the various accounts add details in the various Gospels, as we would certainly expect from eyewitness testimony and accounts. Mark tells us that the women have brought spices so that they can anoint the body of their close friend Jesus, who had been crucified on Friday on the cross of Calvary. Their hearts, their hearts are still heavy, heavy with grief. Those of you who walked with Jesus the Savior through his passion attending the Good Friday service likely know, likely know the jarring feeling of numbness, depression, loneliness, and despair as you left the service asking yourself, what do we do now? Much like when you leave the funeral of a loved one. Good. Good. You got it. That's exactly how Jesus' followers felt. It makes today even sweeter, doesn't it? Amen? Amen. As the women, as the women come closer to his tomb, they wonder, who will roll away the stone? Now, the stone that sealed the tomb was very, very large and wouldn't give way easily. But to their amazement, the stone had already been moved away. Distressed, they enter the tomb, discovering a young man dressed all in white. Now they're frightened. The young man said to them, don't be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There you shall see him, just as he said to you. Thus was fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, who wrote hundreds of years before, he will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. Friends, death has been subject to victory. That's the one essential message of Easter Sunday. That's the word that you've come to St. James to hear. Death has been defeated. Christ is alive. The final enemy has been conquered. God knows, he knows that life isn't always roses and sunshine. There are also thorns, there are also thunderclouds. But Easter is God's promise to us, however, that neither life nor death can conquer us. Easter represents hope, hope, not only for us as we deal with death, but also for us as we deal with everyday living. As the song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. We share in the joy of Mary Magdalene and Peter and all those disciples and devoted followers to whom the risen Christ appeared when death could no longer contain him. For you see, Jesus is present with us right here, right now. So if you're looking for him, if you're looking for Jesus, he's here right now. Right now, right next to you. He's a prayer away and wants to come into your heart. Simply ask him. Ask him to be my Lord and Savior. We don't have to wait to claim that promise. Jesus is so real that you can walk with him and talk with him every single moment of your life. And that, of course, is the meaning of Easter. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. 
the Lord of life has decided to destroy Satan's culture of death. Christ is alive, and because he lives, you shall live. Praise be to God, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Let's stand now, friends. Let's stand and with Easter voices affirm our faith once again as we sing, He lives. <laughs>